Well, I guess we'll wade into this religiosity again, nutrition. There's this huge study that's been making the rounds across the social media landscape and has, you can see by the title, we're, dis dis <laughs> we're discussing the nutrition patterns linked to healthy aging. In this study, which was a long-term observational study, including over 100,000 participants over 30 years, the researchers quantified how many people were still considered aging in a healthy manner, according to five criteria. The criteria were, one, if people survived to 70, two, if people were free of 11 major diseases from type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, to autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, and more. Uh, three, if people were had intact cognitive function, four, if people had intact uh, physical function, and five, if people had intact mental health. Then researchers looked at people's diets every four years via validated food frequency questionnaires. That means that the researchers asked general questions about average intake of particular foods, like over the past year, how often on average do you consume X? So typically people will have some general idea of what they consume. If you're a person on a low carb diet, you can answer a question about pasta pretty well. And if I were asked about quinoa, I know to answer not once in the last year as I stare disgustedly at the researcher. But the researchers also validated these questionnaires using dietary records, biomarker measures, and some other validation techniques to verify the consistency and accuracy of the collection. So before we go on, let's pause for a second for people who don't know anything about nutritional epidemiology to post their comment about how food frequency questionnaires are nonsense. Oh, relax just needling you. Just a joke. Don't crucify me, please. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, all-knowing one. We cool? Let's look into uh, some of the results. We have the uh, various diets on the left side. Don't worry, we'll get into more specifics on them later. Just uh, know that there are different diet categories. The very right side is a heat map of the relative odds of each diet compared against each other. So, for example, the AHEI 2010 diet pattern compared against the REDIP diet is green, which with an asterisk, which indicates that the AHEI 2010 diet is statistically significantly better for healthy aging than the REDIP diet. If it were red, it would be worse. But you'd have to sit there and analyze it for some time. So the researchers also indicated the odds ratio, that's the OR at the bottom there, of healthy aging within each diet as well. That means that comparing those that are in the lowest adherence to that of a particular diet pattern versus those that have the highest adherence. If the dots and lines move to the right, that's higher odds of healthy aging. You'll notice that all the diets indicate improvement in healthy aging, with some maybe slightly edging out others, which is why the heat map exists. The overall point here is that the commonalities between these diets allows for better odds of healthy aging if a person is more adherent. Okay, then the question is, what are the trends in these diets that indicate improved odds of healthy aging? Joy, oh joy, we get to look at another heat map. The main outcome is the one on the far left, healthy aging. Still, if you want to break it up by component of healthy aging, those are also shown. Then we have a long list of different types of foods on the left side. I'm not going to lecture you going over each food by food as you can read it for yourself, but let's highlight a few. Remember, if it's green, it indicates that the more of that food or nutrient, the association in favor of healthy aging. If it's red, it's an inverse association. The more of it, the link is worse aging. If there's a star, in the box, that's a statistically significant result. So near the top, as having a positive relationship with healthy aging, are things like fruit, consuming more unsaturated fats than saturated fats, whole grains, vegetables, and the list goes on, including the dreaded seed oils further down. On the other hand, more trans fats, more meats, more sodium, and more processed meats are linked to worse odds of healthy aging, as previously defined. Now, in typical partisan fashion, some people will be extremely happy about these results and another group will be extremely unhappy. So let me speak to the reasonable middle since uh, we've lost a big chunk of people. 
Uh, there are some puzzling aspects about these data. For example, looking at uh, fast and fried food in the middle there. I tried to find some explanation for this result. Uh, why would fried food and fast food be linked to healthy aging? The researcher's explanation is that this is a measure of going out for fast food, which indicates a social impact, as in going out to eat is linked to better overall social relationships, which contribute to a more vibrant life. You know when you chew gum and then you pull on it and it stretches out massively? If the gum were the explanation given here, uh, they're stretching it. No doubt there might be a social impact, but that it would overcome the negative effects of fast food and fried food seems just absolutely absurd to me. I think there's likely something else going on here that just isn't being explored. I'd also add that things like coffee, seafood, and tea, which have a great track record for cognitive benefit, were either linked to worse or neutral cognitive function. Some of this might be explained by the group that they sampled, so nurses and other health pre professionals. Uh, it's possible that coffee and tea consumption were heightened at unhealthy times, so night shifts and so forth. Just a guess, though. So, no doubt there's some puzzling relationships here in the middle. And beer being linked to worse mental health? Come on, man. Now you've crossed the line. I suppose I should also mention that these associations aren't simple associations, but they are adjusted for covariates, meaning that the researchers are controlled for possible influencing factors. So here's a list. Now, what about ultra-processed foods? Before that, the researchers did further subgroup analyses to find out if certain people, like those that are physically active or those that aren't overweight, along with other subgroups, if these groups experience more or less benefit from these dietary patterns. I'll be covering that and more in the extended version of this video that you're watching, which is part of the Physionic Insiders. Along with that, you get access to my full library of study investigations, along with summaries, a private podcast, live sessions with yours truly, uh, if you're still upset about the jokes that I gave earlier, then, well, unfortunately, you probably will suffer double as an insider. But for the rest of you, I hope to see you there. Well, on the uh, ultra-processed food front, uh, even with all the adjustments across the board, they were linked to worse odds of healthy aging. Now, some more on these diets. Here are their diet names. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single diet and list out all of their components, but I will tell you some of the commonalities across them. All of them, without exception, focused on plant-based foods like whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, uh, legumes, as well as incorporated tea and coffee. On the other hand, they de-emphasized red meat, refined grains, uh, fried foods, butter, sugary drinks, saturated fats, and sodium. I did find this a bit disappointing because the similarity between these diets, except for small nuances, really just seems to repeat the same point. In one way, you could consider that a good thing, but I would like to see greater differences between diets to really tease out some of the true comparisons between divergent diets. Also, it's not like uh, participants specifically consumed these diets. They were segregated based on their collected dietary records to fit these uh, named diet patterns based on the score which they were then fit into each group. So that might explain why the diets are relatively similar. I'm really not sure. Okay, I've said this before, but I know that uh, people often mention that when they avoid certain plant-based foods, they feel better or they get better results. Well, two things. One, this study doesn't directly compare against specifically non-plant-based diets. Two, these expansive studies inform on overall trends on how a person should think about structuring their diet, but it doesn't consider individual circumstances. Some people will have bad reactions to certain foods or certain dietary patterns. In that case, your priority on what to eat changes and likely doesn't reflect what the studies like this indicate. This analysis isn't a condemnation of your personal experience. It's merely a speaking on the whole, if possible. And... If you care about healthy aging, going plant forward is associated with better health, according to this analysis. So the main points here are that when adjusting for many influencing factors, likely plant-based nutrition styles are associated with healthy aging. Although direct comparisons with non-plant-based or particularly low carbohydrate diets 
was not made. If I haven't completely alienated you at this point, I'd love to continue to try in this next video. Thanks for tuning in.